but he took a knife, I don't know if they were eating lunch or whatever, and he stabbed her stepfather. That's how we do it in the South. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Rabbit Shoes Cars. You know, I've been wanting to tell this story for a little while. You gotta rate, rate, wait for the right time, right place. Kind of let things die down a little bit. You know, it was a buy that we actually did in this building. Um, you know, I buy a lot of cars, and you gotta understand that this business there's a there there there's a sad side to it. Um, to collector cars. Um, you got to think, you're like, you know, and, no, and no matter, and all collector car dealerships work the same way. We buy cars and 90% of those cars come from individuals and, you know, they either built them or bought them or whatever, but they were their pride and joy. They were their baby, just like the 69 vet and just like the Bronco sitting in front of there and the OBS truck behind it and, you know, the other Corvette over there. You know what I'm saying? That was somebody's baby. And they're selling this prized possession for a reason. And it's usually not because they're tired of it. And every once in a while you'll run into that. They want something different. But you'll notice with car guys is they tend to collect. So they don't have, you know, they don't sell one to get another one. You know, they may do that early on, but as a rule, they're keeping that one and then they acquire another one and another one and their collection grows. Um, so back to the story, though, the sad side of this business is, is death plays a big role in collector car sales, whether it's rabbit shoes cars or insert any other collector car, especially car dealership around. Um, death and, you know, either that or, you know, something bad happened in the family, you know, divorce or something like that is usually the reason, which is kind of the suck side of this business, because you hear a lot of sad stories. You hear a lot of... You know, the guy that had everything lost it all, or his wife left him, or he got caught doing something, or got in trouble with jail. I mean, I gotta think, you gotta think about it. I bought so many cars that were from the deceased, or from a guy that went to prison, or went to jail. It just happens. It's just part of this business. Um, and they're being sold by loved ones, or family members, or attorneys, or whoever. Um, but something interesting, and, and you got to think, I mean, it, it's to the point, it almost gets a little depressing, these stories, because, you know, naturally you get this background story, you know, and, and, and you know, I mean, I've, I mean, and some are extremely interesting, like, go back to, like, the Lady Killer F100. That was a, that was, I mean, it was a cool story, but really, that's kind of sad. I mean, this dude killed his wife, you know. Um, great truck, belonged to a guy that's a killer, but, you know, whatever, you know, it's going to make the vehicle bad, but it, it's the stigma that goes with it, you know, and, and it gets sometimes, you know, you got to, you know, I try to keep it upbeat and I try to, you know, keep my eye on the prize and focus on the donut, not the hole, all that mentality. But these stories, sometimes they stick with you, you know, and, and this one in particular is one of those. Um, had a really attractive lady hit me up saying, hey, I'm looking to sell a Chevrolet truck. Um, you know, she sent a few pictures of it and I'm good looking truck. Hey, tell me a little more about it. You know, well, my husband built it and yada, 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 yada. And, um, you know, he's had it for years and, and, and I'm looking to sell it. And it's kind of left at that. Well, I gave her my number and I said, hey, when you get a chance, give me a call. I'd love to talk to you about it. You know, I, that's that's one of my big things. I hate when I'm buying. I hate that text back and forth stuff. I, I, I like to get a warm body on the other side and, and let's just talk. And, you know, you can really feel the situation out. You know, you you got to understand, you know, when you're when you're in sales and you're working a deal, it's almost like dancing with a partner, you know, you're either leading or you're following. So naturally over text, it's a little hard to take the lead, but when you get somebody on the phone and you're talking to them, you can control the situation a little more and kind of get the vibe of what's going on. You know, how bad they want to sell it, uh, you know, a little more background on the vehicle, yada, yada, yada. Um, so anyway, she gives me a call and, uh, you know, and she was about an hour away and I said, well, I'd love to come look at the truck. You know, I, I'm really you know interested in it. And she said, yeah, she said, I just don't know what to do. I don't really know how to sell it. To be honest with you, a friend of a friend told her about us. And um, first call she made, 
And I said, well, I said, I'll tell you what, you know, I got a little time this afternoon. If you're free, I'd love to come look at it. You know, maybe we can put a deal together. Still don't know the background. Still don't know where the husband's at. Any of this stuff. So we get to her house and it's just a little small house with no garage. And that's always kind of an awkward feeling when you pull up because you're always kind of looking at your surroundings when you're going somewhere. You know, keep in mind, I have you know, usually you know, a large amount of cash with me to be able to purchase this vehicle or, or whatever. And, you know, so you're, your senses are on alert, you know, and we pull up to a house with no garage, um, you know, a little small, like a mill style house. And, uh, but, but, you know, it was decent, you know, so I got out and, and as soon as I got out of the car, she come walking out and I'm like, Hey, and Hey, and all this stuff. She goes, well, the truck is about five minutes away. And I said, well, Hey, you want to hop in the car and ride over there? Or if you want to get in your car, I can follow you over. And, uh, she's like, well, sure. So she got in the car with me. You know, and um, so we pulled out of the driveway and she's, you know, take a left, take a right, whatever. So we're riding down the road and and uh, and we pull up to the storage unit place, you know, like a mini storage place you ever seen. You know, got the little key code, the gate, pull in, drive around, you know, whatever. It was kind of in the back and there was like a one car slot garage space there. She pops her little padlock off, rolls the door, and there this truck sits. Um, you know, keep in mind, we got this much room, literally you know, on both sides of the truck and barely enough room to open the door to get in it, you know? And, and, um, and I said, can we pull it out? And she said, of course, you know, so she pulls it out and the, and the truck is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I knew as soon as it lit, rolled out of the concrete that I was going to own it at that point. Um, we just got to figure out how much I was going to pay for it first. So, walk around truck and, and, and just a good looking truck, you know, all the way around. And I said, I said, so is your husband around or something? And I said, I'm assuming you have the title of this truck. And she goes, well, my husband, he's, he's no longer living. He passed away. And I said, well, ma'am, I'm so sorry to hear that. And I'm like, well, that explains this deal. Um, so, uh, you know, we go back and forth on the numbers a little bit. And she's like, well, what do you think it's worth? And I told her, I said, well, you got to look at that two ways. Keep in mind, I'm buying it to resell it. Um, I'm not buying it to keep it for a prized possession. I mean, it's a great truck, but in my line of work, I don't really do that. Um, I said, I will give you a fair price. And it's, you know, probably one of the better deals you're going to get because, you know, everybody's a flipper and explaining, you know, the, the whole pain, but just problems with selling cars online and selling cars on the marketplace or Craigslist and the scams and all that stuff. And she's like, oh yeah, I totally understand that. I understand that. And, uh, and I said, I really hate that your husband passed me had a gorgeous truck. And, um, so we get to talking and we put a deal together and, you know, and, and I, you know, so I get her paid and she said, well, I have the title back of the house. And I said, can you leave this truck here till the end of the week? And I'll send transport to pick it up and um, we can arrange for that. So, so we go back to her house. She had the title to the truck. Um, you know, all that stuff, paid for the truck, got the title of the truck. So we're sitting there talking, we're sitting, literally sitting at her kitchen table at this point, you know, and keep in mind, we've been talking for an hour and a half at this point. And, uh, we're sitting there and, uh, I saw pictures on the refrigerator of her and another guy. And I said, I said, well, that's a good pick right there. It's kind of pointing to a refrigerator. And she goes, yeah, that's my fiance. Well, was my fiance. And I'm like, man, I hate to hear that. And I said, and, uh, you know, those are, those are kind of touchy situations. You know, you don't really know how to handle those. You know, she's telling about her husband now her and her fiance broke up. And I said, yeah, breakups are rough. You know, so we've all been there. And, uh, she goes, no, 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 he died. And the first thing that popped in my head, you're selling your dead husband's truck. And I just looked at a picture of your fiance that has died also. And I'm just looking at the picture, you can tell it was fairly recent. And, and I'm like, man, this is weird. And I said, there's gotta be a story behind this. You know, I, I, was, I was thinking to myself, there's gotta, I didn't say that. I was thinking to myself, damn, there's gotta be a crazy story behind this. So, I mean, just, I'm curious at this point. I said, I said, so if you don't mind me asking, what happened to your husband? 
And uh, she goes, well, my husband owned a very successful landscaping company. And they said that, you know, you know, we got to think about it. we were high school sweethearts and, you know, he, he grew this company up and it got huge. You know, he had 30 employees and, you know, all this. I drove a brand new Mercedes. And first thing I thought of, she drove a brand new Mercedes. But when I pulled in the driveway, there was a Ford Taurus sitting there, an older one. And she said, I had a brand new Mercedes. We had a beautiful home. And, um said something about my husband that I didn't know till after we were married. He had a little problem with drugs and uh, that he went to rehab and got cleaned up and and was doing great. Um, She said, you know, we had a son together and, uh, you know, and everything was perfect. You know, I stayed at home and, you know, he ran the landscaping company, did all that stuff. Um, She said, I noticed we started getting phone calls at the house a few years in. Um, bill collectors calling, um, you know, allowed to come home and like the power company's turning the power off or, you know, she's getting, you know, a repo truck coming to get her car and, uh, her husband's truck got repossessed a few times in a later model truck. He drove every day, got repossessed and she kept asking him, is everything all right? I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so we just kind of had an off couple months. It's all going to be all right. Um, whatever, you know, and, 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 and and she just you know, took his word for it. You know, she said, I mean, I didn't know anything to do but to trust him. So, uh, well, come to find out, she gets a call from the police. He gets arrested. Um, he got busted, stoned out of his mind on some unknown substance. I didn't ask, whatever. And um, he had a lot of it on him also. And they arrest him for it. Um, and this is where the story gets crazy. Um, she literally goes down and part of his sentencing, he was go- was going to be sent to a rehabilitation center. Um, you know, he admitted he had a problem and he then got back into drugs real bad and, and, and to the point where he was going to try to start dealing them to try to pull himself back out um, behind his wife's back. But still looked like he was just doing landscaping stuff. Um, so he goes to this rehabilitation or rehabilitation center rather, and he's been there for a couple months and her, the wife's stepfather, Kate was close to him and her and all that stuff. And he decided, you know what, I'm going to ride up and, and see him. You know, he was there for a little while and he could actually have visitors. So they did that. Now keep in mind in the midst of all this stuff, they lost everything. They lost their home. You know, they lost all their possessions, basically, you know, and, and, you know, she had to move back in with her family and all this stuff. Well, when the stepfather came to visit, her stepfather came to visit him, um, they were actually sitting outside and he was smoking a cigarette or whatever, and they were talking and the stepfather said something to him that just made him flip. And, uh, he actually took a knife, like a, and from the way it was described to me, I don't know the exact details of it, but he took a knife, I don't know if they were eating lunch or whatever, and he stabbed her stepfather. Well, when he stabbed her stepfather, there was guards there, obviously, and he has this knife in his hand, and this man's on the ground holding his chest that just got stabbed, so they shoot him. He dies. The stepfather dies two days later in the hospital. I'm like, damn, this is horrible. You know, the story, you know, and, and she lost everything, you know, and, and the only thing really out of that marriage she got was her son and this truck that I'm buying. And uh, she said, so then, you know, a year or two goes by and, uh, you know, once everything gets settled and whatnot, she said, I, I really was scared to sell the truck before that because she said, I didn't know if I was going to need it. You know, if somebody was going to come get it or something. You know, I didn't know what was going to happen. She said, so my family actually paid to put it in storage. And um, so you got to think about it. She lost her stepfather and her husband, like back to back. She said, fast forward a couple years. You know, she said, I met this really nice guy. You know, she said, I took a job in a restaurant. You know, he used to come in every week. Next thing you know, me and him start talking and then start texting and then led to phone calls and loved to go on a couple dates. And she said, I fell in love. She said, he was a great guy. Said, you know, he raced motorcycles on the weekends, just real laid back. You know, he worked in a motorcycle shop, yada, yada, yada. She said that, uh, 
They actually got engaged, and two weeks later, he died in a motorcycle accident. And that was about three months prior to me being there. So, I mean, that was real recent. And I'm thinking, and, then, and she told this story without a tear in her eye. And I'm just like, damn, you're a strong woman. I mean, good Lord, like my heart is going out to her at this point. But, you know, got the truck bought, got it here. It's sold. It's long gone now. But that explains to you some of the stories with these things, you know, and, and, and people joke around all the time, like, you know, you know, not every car's got a story. No, they all have a story. Some are really good. Some are really sad. Some are, you know, just kind of boring, you know, just kind of open and shut cases. But I mean, it's so crazy the things these cars have seen. And if they could talk, some of the things they could say. Just goes to show you, sometimes you got to count your blessings and enjoy every day like it's your last. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. <laughs> <laughs>